This is Selma Schimmel at the Multidisciplinary Cancer Congress 2011 in Stockholm. Today we're joined by oncology nurse Dr. Eileen Furlong, recipient of the 2011 European Society of Nursing Oncology Distinguished Merit Award for her research on the effects of a maternal cancer diagnosis on school-aged children. Eileen, congratulations. Thank you. Yes, I'm honored and privileged to be the okay. recipient. How does that feel after dedicating your life to oncology nursing? Wonderful feeling, and um, it's, it's one that I, I certainly will treasure the feeling of today. I feel very honored to have received it. I feel I represent cancer nurses in Ireland in particular, and I um, have joined a list of very esteemed colleagues in this award. Um, as you can see, people who have received it in the past. So it's a huge honor to me and a huge recognition of over 20 years of cancer nursing contribution in Europe. And, and what made you choose uh, oncology research nursing as your passion? I suppose in many ways, you know, once one qualifies in, in Ireland, one takes, um, usually works in sort of more general capacity. And I always had an interest in cancer nursing, both from a personal point of view, but also professionally. And my career in cancer nursing started with children's cancer nursing. So not something that one would take on uh, without a lot of thought. Having said that, I've worked with children for 20 years plus. I love children. And I suppose like, like any career, once you decide on a specialty, um, then it's one that you acquire knowledge and skills. And then it becomes something that I love and, and still do continue to love, although I've moved into education as opposed to practice at the moment. Um, so it was probably quite a personal choice in relation to quite early on having experienced cancer, having seen what it could do to families, to wanting to make a difference, or at least wanting to try to make a difference for families. And, and you have a PhD? I do now, which is wonderful, yes. Uh, and I've just completed my PhD uh, on looking at the impact of uh, a maternal cancer diagnosis on school-aged children. Now, school-aged children, I'm referring to early school-aged children, so 7 to 11-year-old children whose mother has been diagnosed with cancer. And again, I suppose it just follows through with my commitment to children and to what I believe. What have we learned about the impact of, of children whose mothers are going through breast cancer? My study focused on the children's voices, and therefore I asked the children themselves about the experience. So from my study, what we have learned is, um, and it was a particular methodology of grounded theory, that we've learned that children engage in a process of protecting their mother, but also protecting their own lives as they navigate a period of what we call disrupted mothering. So the mothering experience is altered, and the children, the children have a loss of what they perceive to be their well mother and now they enter into a, a child who is a, has a mother who's not well. So there's quite a lot of negotiation within the family, changes in routines, changes in responsibilities and the children found that quite difficult. They also did not like the fact that outside people knew about their mother's illness. Is there a feeling of shame? There's a stigma attached to cancer still, and these children would not have known about cancer prior to the mother's diagnosis. This, they had a public image of cancer, so still quite a negative image of cancer, and one where they would not like their mom to be seen in public without, say, her wig on, for example. I'm curious about whether little girls develop any kind of fear as they begin to develop in relation to their own emerging breasts. And I thought that might have been uh, evident in my findings, but it's not. The, I had interviewed um, 15 girls and 13 boys, so quite equal. Uh, there were some siblings in that, there was, but there was no difference in the boys and girls in relation to the findings and their perception of the future. And whether they were quite young still and hadn't I'm not too sure because I, I can only I can only um, surmise that because I find this, but I could only go by what the children told me, and none of them were concerned about their own development of cancer at that stage. They were concerned about their mother dying, and even though every one of the children in my study that mothers had early stage breast cancer with an extant prognosis, all of the children in the study asked me during the interview about the fact of would would, would their mother die, even though they reassured themselves. And, and, and the mothers have excellent, you know, they will do very well and have done very well. What was the most surprising finding? 
I suppose really that the disrupted mothering, the impact it had on the child's life, and the need for the child to try and protect their own life. And it wasn't that they weren't concerned about their mother, but the child's innate uh, focus was on themselves and how they had to shift from being a child of a well mother to being a child of a mother with breast cancer. So what I saw was made a disruption to their life. And really, the mother's life has been disrupted, but they were, and I know mothers might, might find it surprising, they were more worried about the disruption to their lives as opposed to the change that were happening in the mother's life. They resented the fact that their life changed. They had to take on roles and responsibilities that seven to 11-year-old children in Ireland wouldn't normally have to take on. What recommendations based on your research might you have for a mother going through this experience with their young children? One of the key recommendations I would like to look at is how we could put in place supportive interventions for parents whose children have been diagnosed with cancer. And I think we can, we can extend it to parents. Um, I know my study is particularly about women with breast cancer. At the moment, it's, it, it's everybody, um, there is an attempt to, to help the mother, but because the structures in cancer nursing and in nursing, medical oncology and radiation oncology, is the children don't get a chance to come into the hospital setting. I think that's across most of the, of the centers due to time constraints, infection control, and restraints. So therefore, the child isn't getting access to the healthcare professionals. And the healthcare professionals don't have access to the children. So at the moment, the children, I, I talked about this morning about being left out in the cold. Not intentionally, but they're not getting access to healthcare professionals. When we look at literature that's available for children to help them understand cancer, there are some uh, booklets written, but they're written for talking to your child about cancer, but they're written for an adult. So there's nothing in child oriented language. Now, I say nothing, sorry, that's not right. There are some um, internationally, some documentation there in relation, but I think we need to expand and look at having an interactive process for children which help them understand a cancer diagnosis. And, 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 and age appropriate. Very important. So language and cognitive development of the child and social development of the child is really important. How important is it to have open communication when mom's diagnosed with the kids? It's, it's very important but very difficult. And that's one thing parents are told, you know, when they ask the healthcare professional, be honest with your child, but then they're told to go home. And for most of the children in my study, they weren't directly told that their mother had cancer. They picked up the cues in the family home from them seeing their mother upset, numerous phone calls, numerous cards, flowers arriving, doorstop conversations, whispering. So they, the majority of them were not told directly until they already knew and then they were told. Now the parents meant very well, they were trying to protect their children, but in that protection, the children already found out in other ways. So it's really important, but I think as healthcare professionals, we have to help the, the mothers and the parents who are diagnosed with cancer. That, that that's, They're already coping themselves with the diagnosis, and we say, be honest with your children. Particularly now, remember, I'm talking about seven to 11 year olds. Teenagers have a different capacity for understanding it. Children already have constructed a meaning of cancer, which is usually around television, the soap operas and sometimes that it's very good sometimes but it's not always in, in, in a real way for them in understanding. So it's how to talk to children is, is a huge issue uh, about illness but particularly about cancer. And were there any notable changes in behavior with kids with their fathers while mom was going through cancer? It's a really interesting finding that I have discussed in my, in my actual discussion chapter that 25 of the children in my study had, were from a two-parent family out of 28. So, and the other three were from a single, um, the mother was a single parent. Very rarely was the father actually mentioned. And I know this might be quite upsetting from a point of view of the fathers. It's not that they weren't involved, um, but the children focused totally on themselves and their mother. Now, a lot of it was as well, the fathers, a lot of the fathers were out working during the day. And so therefore, 
I'm not too sure if the role of the father just remained the same in many ways. So apart from the fact that dad features sometimes about work, he, it, he didn't, it, he unfortunately didn't feature hugely. Their relationship didn't seem to center. And I don't know whether that's because it was the mother that had the cancer and therefore that was a focus. I wasn't focusing on, I was focusing on them. I wasn't focused on them particularly. I was focused on them as children with a mother who had cancer. But I didn't exclude the father in any way in my questions. And there is an actual concern about how the, the absence of the father in my findings. And remember, this is just my findings, yeah. What communication is really necessary so when that child goes to school that the teacher could be aware the child may be very tired, may not be doing assignments, may be falling asleep in class, may be acting out in class. Is there something that you've learned about the dynamic between the teacher, the mother, and the child? The communication between the mother and the teacher was already established and, and the mother had told the teacher uh, about the diagnosis. Now again, remember the children weren't told too early so the, parent, the teacher was told at a certain time as well. But what was interesting again from the children's perspective was that they didn't, they knew the teacher knew, they did not like the teacher asking about their mother in any public way in school. And they also didn't like if they were singled out and, and the teacher called them up to ask about their mother. So in some ways I think it was quite a, an interesting relationship that the teachers, for teachers to get it right, in how they cope with it was, wasn't easy because if the teachers didn't ask it might look like they didn't care but the children really wanted school to be normal and by the teacher asking them it brought the impact of their mother's diagnosis into another sphere of their life that they wanted to keep normal and I talk about this in my study about shifting normality so the sh normality of home had shifted they didn't want the normality of school to shift so there's quite a dichotomy of whether teachers should ask and what teachers should know. But at the moment in our school system within Ireland, it's even the difficulty of you know, large class numbers and even how the teachers themselves can cope with, in fact, the communication with children. Children and teachers do it very well from an education perspective, but illness is not part of the school curricula in Ireland in relation to talking about illness. It isn't part of it. So that was another interesting finding within it. It's like, yes, they wanted them to know, but they didn't want them to ask. Well, I want to thank you for the research. I think it's very, very important that we don't forget the impact that cancer has on our kids. Thank you. And a particular congratulations again for the EONS, the European Oncology Nursing Society Distinguished Merit Award.